Trinity triplets. Uh, turn to first, first. Turn to Genesis 1:26, please. We're going to go over 26 and 27. I had a sister in Christ say, uh, would have asked me questions about this, saying it's one of the main verses for the Trinity to prove that God in three persons. When all you need to disprove that is the Bible teaches three and one. It does not teach one and three. And that's what, ha that's what the Trinity people do when they say God in three persons. One and three. And they'll kind of deny it, but that's what they teach. So I want to go through Matthew 27, 24, 2 Corinthians 2, 10, and Hebrews 1, 3. Each one of those is a reference to Jesus being a person. So let's go to Matthew 27, 24. I'm going to turn pages, but it's getting windy and I get wind gusts. So I'm going to try to keep it where we're mainly going to be talking. So uh, if you want to turn to Matthew 27, 24. Matthew 27, 24. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. See, Jesus was referred to as a person. This just person. Singular. 2 Corinthians 2.10 to whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything to whom I forgave it, for your sakes forgave I it in the person of Christ. Jesus Christ. Hebrews 1.3, here's the one that the Trinitarians love to twist. Okay, They love to twist and ignore plain English. Who, being the brightness of His glory and the expressed image of His person, and upholding all things by the word of His power, when He had made by Himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Now here it says the expressed image of His person. His is referring to God, and person is referring to Jesus Christ. And the best example I always give for this is, I have an older brother and a younger brother. We own one dog. If I say our dog, you know, uh, it's ours. But if I say it's my dog, it's possessive. The dog's not referring to me. It's me saying it's my dog. Our dog, same thing. Possessive, it's saying it's our dog. But each individual, which we'll talk about in a minute, can say it's my dog, it's my dog, it's my dog. There's three of us. I have two brothers. My dog, my dog, my dog. If he say right here, knows how person is after his. So his person is shown possession. That person there is a reference to Jesus Christ. That whole verse is talking about who Jesus Christ is to God the Father. He's the image of God the Father and person of God the Father. Uh, so those are the three verses. There's supposed to be a fourth one that I keep forgetting, brothers and sisters in Christ. If you want to put that down at the bottom, uh, Please help out. Um, I just, for some reason, had a frustration, couldn't find it. But those are the three main ones in the New Testament that show that Jesus is a person. There's nowhere in Scripture does it say that God the Father is a person. Nowhere in Scripture does it say the Holy Spirit is a person. So for you to say God in three persons, one and three, which the Bible is against, it doesn't teach one and three, it teaches that these three are one. Three are one, not three in one, but three are one. And the Trinity people teach that the three, they'll say three in one a lot, or they'll try to say three are one, but then they'll turn around and say one and three. God and three persons. One and three. The Bible doesn't teach that. So I wanted to get that out there real quick, that Jesus is the only person of the Godhead. The only person. Jesus is the only one referred to as a person in the Bible when it comes to the Godhead. The only one. God the Father is not mentioned as a person, and neither is the Holy Spirit. But we're going to look into this. 1 Genesis 1.23 And God said, Let us make man in our image. After our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. 
All right. Turn to Hebrews 1.1. 1, 1. Notice it says our image there. So if you turn to Hebrews 1, 1, um, and while you're doing that, remember what I just said. Our image, God the Father is saying, my image. Jesus Christ is saying, my image. The Holy Ghost is saying, my image. And you put it together, and that's how you get our image. And our image. There's two ways to look at that verse. If you're a Trinitarian, and you're being honest, and you believe God in three persons, then you believe in triplets. God the Father, and Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to prove that Jesus Christ is the only image of the Godhead. God the Father claims him as, the, as his image, which we already talked a little bit about. So Jesus Christ is the only image. So if God's a separate person, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit's a separate person, they each look like Jesus Christ, which means you have triplets. There was somebody, I think it was Steve Anderson, that he was trying to explain away the verse where Jesus is saying, he that's seen me has seen the Father, and he's like, that's, that's twins. See, if you've seen the Father, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, because they're, they're twins. Uh, according to this verse, when they try to use it to prove the Trinity, they're saying they're triplets. The Godhead is about triplets. you got three men that look alike. Hebrews 1.1, 1, 1. we already hit Hebrews 1.3, but we're going to go over it again, Hebrews 1.1. 1, 1. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in the last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Jesus Christ created everything. I had to throw that verse in there because it's explaining that we're talking about Jesus Christ. Who being the brightness of his glory, God the Father, and the expressed image, Jesus, of his, God the Father, person, Jesus Christ, and upholding all things by the world of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So God is claiming right there that Jesus is his person, his image. Okay. So we see that Jesus is the image of God the Father. But we're going to keep going. It doesn't stop there. Compare scripture with scripture. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4. And whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Now i got to stop for a second because the Trinity people will say, well, see, God's referring to Jesus Christ. Uh, 1 Corinthians 8, 6, which they can never explain away, they just have to ignore it, says there is but one capital G God, the Father. Only one God, the Father. The Father is God. So in order for Jesus to be God, He has to be the Father. It also says in that verse there is one capital L, Lord, Jesus Christ. So God here, because it's capital G, God, and there's only one God, the Father, it's talking about God, the Father. Jesus, who is the image of God. So God the Father is claiming Jesus as his image. Colossians 1.15, another example of God claiming the image of Jesus Christ as his own. Colossians 1.15, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. I'm talking about Jesus Christ being the image of the invisible God. So far, Jesus Christ is the only image of the Godhead. 1 Corinthians 11, 7. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, forasmuch as he is the image and glory of God. But the woman is the glory of the man. So man was made in the image of the glory of God. Image and glory of God. So back here where we're reading, when it said, let us make man in our image, it's talking about Adam, not, not Eve, Adam. And when you look at his image, he's a man. The body, Jesus Christ. Uh, we'll get to the, the, what the Godhead teaches and how we look at that verse as people who are Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women who believe in the Godhead. But the Trinity looks at that and says, well, it's talking about three persons. So each one of them has their own image, 
And that image, so far, is Jesus Christ. So you're looking at three men. Now, where do we see three men in Revelation? Uh, the true trinity. You have the beast, the antichrist, and the false prophet. And they're going to come, I, I believe, 100%. They appear as men. Okay? That's where you get your three men. Now, um, Romans 1.20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. talking about God the Father, I believe. But still, you see invisible things of Him. Things. Uh, one of the verses in the Bible talks about where it calls Jesus a thing as a baby in, in His mother's womb. So things here, I believe it's talking about God the Father and the Holy Spirit. The invisible things of Him from the creation of the world. The world are clearly seen being understood by things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, okay, so that they are without excuse. So we have invisible and we have in Godhead, okay. Jesus Christ is still the only image of the Godhead. And how do we know that? Look in the mirror. 1 Timothy 1.17 Now unto the King Eternal, who's King of Kings and Lord of Lords? Jesus Christ. King eternal, immortal, invisible. Would we just read up there in first or Colossians 1.15, who is the image of the invisible God? Invisible. Right there it's saying that Jesus Christ is God the Father. But let's keep going. The only wise capital G God. And I'm always going to say capital G God because 1 Corinthians 8.6 says there's only one capital G, God the Father. And I'm trying to hopefully that that will sink into some people. Be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Okay. Jesus is God the Father. But it says invisible. Jesus is the image of God the Father. Now, as you read this, they like to grab the R, uh, us, and say, see, it's God in three persons. What that's showing here is 1 John 5, 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. God three, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, I must have left out the verse about where they agree in one. I don't know how, but it just disappeared from my notes. But there's the verse, and I'll link it at the bottom, uh, that talks about how they agree in one. And that's what's going on up here. They're agreeing in one. So... Right there, what we looked at, there's only one image of the Godhead, Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is a man. And Adam was made in the image, in our image. Man, a physical body. So, God the Father must be a man, and the Holy Spirit must be a man. Because it says, our image, which means God the Father can say, Adam, that's my image. Jesus can say, and he's the only one that can, that's my image. The Holy Spirit can say, that's my image. So you're dealing with three men. Three men. And Adam, th there's not three Adams, and there's not three, like he's shaped where, where it looks like there's three different men, so they all have to be the same image. So you're looking at, for the Godhead, they're teaching triplets. And they try to use this first to, to you know, and they're going to say, I'm crazy. You're, you're ludicrous. You're crazy. For a God-fearing, Bible-believing man and woman, my brothers and sisters in Christ out there, we understand to compare Scripture with Scripture. There's only one image. So when it says our image, the Godhead are three. Three are one. There's only one image of the Godhead, Jesus Christ. God the Father can claim that image because Jesus and God the Father are one. They're one and the same. The Holy Spirit, they're one and the same. The distinction is body, soul, and spirit which we're going to get to here in a second. But we can look at it, brothers and sisters in Christ, and say uh, the image it's talking about there is Jesus, Jesus Christ. They're one and the same. Then when it says our image, 
they're all one and the same. Jesus is the body. Colossians 2 9, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He is the expressed image of God. So you have that part of the scripture of uh, Genesis 1 26, where it says, Let us make man in our image. It's talking about Jesus Christ. And the only way you can say that is if you believe in the Godhead. If you don't believe in the Godhead and you believe in the Trinity that's God in three persons, then you have to say that God the Father is a man, Jesus is a man, and the Holy Ghost is a man. And each one of them has a body. Who cares about the word person? Because they don't. They like to make up their own definitions. Who cares about the word person? Right there shows that if you believe what they believe, then each one of them has at least a body. And the pagan trinity of the Catholic Church, they each have a body. And the reason I said triplets is because did Adam have any feathers on him? Did he have wings? So the Holy Ghost is not a dove. So triplets is what they treat, teach. And they'll try to hide it. They'll try to beat around the bush. They're, try, they're probably going to try to say, I'm ludicrous. I don't care. If you don't believe in the Godhead and you believe in the Trinity, you're saying triplets. If you believe in the Godhead, you, these three are one. They're talking about Jesus Christ when it says our image, singular Jesus Christ. But they all are one, so all of them can claim the image of Jesus Christ. These three are one. Now, the next part of it, and they're not going to like this part either. It says, after our likeness. What's the likeness? How are we created? We have a body, we have a soul, and we have a spirit. And the same thing applies there, our likeness. If you believe in the Trinity, then God the Father is saying, He's made in my likeness, body, soul, and spirit. Jesus is saying, He's made in my likeness, body, soul, and spirit. The Holy Spirit is saying, He's made in my likeness, body, soul, and spirit. If you believe in the Godhead and our likeness, God the Father is like, I'm a soul, He's got a soul. Jesus is like, I'm the body, He has a body, He's made in my likeness. The Holy Spirit's I'm a spirit, he has a spirit, made in my likeness. These three are one, body, soul, and spirit. So, Colossians 1.14. Uh, God created man. I went ahead and let's do uh, verse 27. I don't know if I read that, but let's do verse 27 in Genesis. So God created man in his own image. Okay, his own image. And the image of God created he him. Then there's two dot, there's a dot and a comma. Male and, fil male and female created he them. I believe that comma is separating the two from verse 6, 26. He makes man in his image. And the likeness there is what it's talking about for man, male and female. Okay. Because we got there where it talks about how man was made in the image and the glory of God, but the woman is in the glory of the man. Because the woman was taken from man, the rib of the man. So, Colossians 1.14. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Yeah, Jesus Christ created everything, but right here it's saying God, in verse 27, capital G God, the Father, created man. If they're not one and the same, that's a contradiction. And notice, God, once again, God's claiming Jesus Christ to be his image. Man in his own image. The image we prove there is Jesus Christ. So not only is God claiming the image in that passage of Jesus Christ, them being one and the same, but he's also claiming to be Jesus because he's saying he created everything. Here, we just read Jesus created everything. Okay? Revelations 
Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. Jesus is the one that created everything. Yet right there in verse 27 of Genesis, it's saying God created everything. Now, I'm a King James Bible believer. I believe in the Godhead. When I read that, I realize it's talking about Jesus and God being one and the same. God created everything because, and Jesus created everything because they're one and the same. So it can say down here where we read those two verses where it says Jesus created everything, and up here we can see God, the Father created everything, and we go, Godhead people, we're like, it's because they're one, head, one and the same. We believe in the Godhead. Trinity people go, they can't be one and the same, they can't be one and the same, so, oh, oh, God there is, is talking, in verse 27, it's talking about Jesus Christ. And they'll ignore 1 Corinthians 8, 6. God here is talking about the Father. John 1, 1, the dreaded John 1, 1, the Trinity people hate. In the beginning was the Word, capital W. And the Word was God, capital W, capital G on God. Capital W Word is the manifest Word. It's referring to Jesus Christ. And the capital G God is referring to the Father. And the last part of that verse, and the Word was God. God. They're one and the same. They can't stand that. So who created everything? Jesus Christ. Who created everything? God the Father. That's so confusing. No, it's not. Not if you believe in the Godhead. It's not confusing at all. In 1 John 5, 8, when, we were, when I was talking about when it says are and us, I think the main reason it's doing that is 1 John 5, 8. And the and there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree in one. It's showing that they agree in one. Yes, we're going to do it. We're going to make man in our image. We're going to make man in our likeness. They're agreeing in one. There's no debating. There's no arguing like people do, persons do. There's no debating. There's no arguing. They say they're going to do it, and they agree in unison. Okay? They agree in one. So, like I've shown here, if, and it just amazed me when I started doing the study, I was like, I kept trying to say, well, I'm, I'm going to try to disprove R as being a person or us being a person, and I stopped and I said, you know what, I really don't have to do that. If you believe God in three persons, one and three, which the Bible doesn't teach, and it says our image, then you're saying God the Father is a man, Jesus is a man, and the Holy Ghost is a man. And they look the same because it says image singular, not images plural. So you have triplets. It says in our likeness. So if you're a Trinitarian, our likeness, then God the Father can say, I made man in my likeness. And how are we created? We have a body, we have a soul, and a spirit. And if there's separate persons, God can sit there and say, he's in my image. In other words, I have a body, soul, and spirit. Jesus Christ, which is the only one that can do this, can say, He's made in my likeness, body, soul, and spirit. The Holy Ghost can look at it and go, Yeah, He's made in my likeness too, body, soul, and spirit. And they'll try to twist what I'm saying and, and everything, but that's called proper English. Uh, so, likeness can simply mean the Godhead. God the Father is a soul. Jesus is the body. Holy Ghost is the spirit. What do we have? What did Adam have? He had a body, soul, and spirit. That's the likeness. So, I always come back to this. The big controversy in the Godhead versus the Trinity is you have people that have faith in what is Godhead. Our rock. And you have people that have to know how it can be what it is. Trinity, sand, people's words. Trinity's not in the Bible. Triune's not in the Bible. God in three persons not in the Bible. God the Son, God the Holy Sp Ghost is not in the Bible. God the Father being a person's not in the Bible. Uh, the Holy Ghost being a person's not in the Bible. They're never called a person. The only part of the Godhead that's called a person is Jesus Christ. 
So don't fall into the trap where they try to grab stuff. Do your studies, brothers and sisters in Christ. Do your studies. And don't just grab one, let them grab one verse, and you can't grab one verse. Uh, I'll be doing a word study. I know I'm still in the middle of repentance slash repent slash repentance, and I'm going to keep going with it. But I'm excited, and I'm going to go ahead and start another word study together with it, and it's going to be on the word person. And we're going to go through and get context and see, is person ever a reference to somebody that doesn't have a body, soul, and spirit? Okay. And uh, it'll be a neat study. So make sure you're doing your own studies. Make sure you're realizing that they're going to try to grab anything and everything. Uh, Genesis 1, chapter 1, verse 26 and 27, prove the Godhead. One image, Jesus Christ. Yet each part of the Godhead is claiming that image as their own. Likeness. And our likeness. We understand that God the Father's likeness is the soul. Uh, Jesus Christ's likeness is the body. And the Holy Ghost likeness is the spirit. And we're made like that. Body, soul, and spirit. But the Trinity people, they will deny it, but they have. If they're trying to say that proves the Trinity, then they're trying to say that God the Father has a body, soul, and spirit of his own. Jesus has a body, soul, and spirit of his own, which he does. And the Holy Ghost does. And yet they'll deny that. They deny that they believe that. Yet they'll grab verses and say that proves the Trinity, God in three persons, that turn around and, and basically say body, soul, and spirit for each one, and they'll throw a fit. We don't believe that. We don't believe that. Now, gosh, I'm trying my best, brothers and sisters in Christ, and it's getting to the point where we got to move on. Uh, we've proven the Trinity time and time again. I'm going to be getting back to my... Uh, Courageous Man, Foolish Man videos, Is God Truly Great? I'm going to keep encouraging you, brothers and sisters in Christ, to stay in the Word, to stay in prayer, to continue to sanctify your life, clean house, and uh, words have meaning, and get back to you know our word studies. And I'll even plan on getting out to the uh, beach sometime and start getting some more uh, Bible by the ocean side and worship by the ocean side out there. With Worship by the Ocean Side, I want to make sure that I do a good video. Um, with the uh, Bible by the Ocean Side, there's a million chapters. So I grab a, a, a world, I try to make sure it's a good video, 10 minute video to get the uh, chapter uh, in there. But I'm not as you know meticulous as I am with trying to do good for the uh, worship songs, the old hymns and everything. So don't fall for these uh, Trinity triplets. And don't fall for this Trinity, God, and three persons where each person has their own body, soul, and spirit. Don't fall for it. I love my brothers and sisters in Christ out there. Grace and peace from God our Father be with you and my love for you in Christ Jesus. See you in the next video.